page 23, do less self-focusing. So I've described this as normalize your routine. So people who suffer from anxiety often understandably become very focused on themselves. It just goes with the territory. As long as you've got panic, you're always scanning your body for symptoms. You're scanning outside to see if anything is going to trigger those symptoms. There's a lot of self-focus. All right, you, you sort of feel that you can't take your attention away from yourself or you might be in trouble. And that's part of fight or flight. The fight or flight response actually builds that up in us, that you know, self-preservation. So this continual worry feeds into the anticipatory anxiety cycle. And people imagine that they have to sort out the anxiety before they can get on with their life. So they think, well, I know I have a, I have a lot of things I need to be doing during the day, but I need to feel okay first. I need to fix this anxiety problem. Right? But when you desperately try to sort out the anxiety, you make yourself more anxious because the more you try to get rid of anxiety, the more anxiety you're producing. Again, that's the cycle. So try this. A more helpful attitude is, right, this is just adrenaline, fight or flight response. I know I'm going to have to let it run its course, but since it is just adrenaline, it's just a fight or flight. I might as well get on with my day. I'll do other things. Because if I'm not in any real danger, then why can't I do other things? I'll just do that. And I, I'm understanding about fighting it and trying to fix it and analyze it. That's not helping. So if I get on with my day, then at least I'm going towards acceptance. So start to normalize your routine. And first of all, this will seem forced. You know, because you're so used to sitting there worrying about the anxiety, when you get up and just do something that is not that you would have normally done before you had panic, it seems forced to begin with because you're thinking, you know, I should really be sitting down working on this, resisting it, fighting it, but I, you know, I'm, I'm not really doing this properly. It doesn't matter. Just start the process. Okay, just accept this for now. And do more and more ordinary everyday things. Now, after a while, it won't feel so forced, and eventually you'll start to enjoy what you're doing and you'll forget the symptoms and sensations. As long as you're practicing, you're getting on with your day, you're normalizing your routine, and you're allowing any symptoms to be in the background, then everything will start coming into more of a balance. This is not your fault, okay, very important. It's not like you want to feel this way. And you hear all your friends, family, doctors telling you to either pull yourself together, try to relax, you know, just do something else, think about something else. What are you so worried about? And the more you hear that, the more you, f you feel that you're to blame because you can't seem to be able to do that. Because everyone's saying, why can't you just snap out of it? What's wrong with you? And you're thinking, yeah, what is wrong with me? They're right, why can't I just do that? But the reality is you've been trying so hard to pull yourself together. You've been unknowingly adding to the problem because your resistance and your desperation, sending fear signals through the body, body responds more symptoms. So this is not your fault. You didn't know that you were doing that. And other people, you know, they don't really know what they're saying either. They don't understand panic disorder. You might even say that to somebody else if you'd never experienced panic and they had it. So just let that go. You're not alone in feeling this way. Keep that in mind. Always remember that. It helps. A great many people feel exactly as you do and a great many people have fully recovered. All right. Everyone thinks their symptoms are the worst. We all think that. How could anyone possibly feel this bad? You even hear about other people with panic and you think, I bet you they've never felt as bad as I do. So this can happen to anyone at any time. 
Now another good thing to remember, it doesn't matter how long you've been like this. It really doesn't matter. If you've been like this for 30 years, if you're reading this 40 years, 50 years, it doesn't really matter. You're caught in exactly the same anxiety cycle as somebody that's just had two panic attacks. It's because you keep misinterpreting what the symptoms mean. But it's still just a mistake. And even if you've been doing it repeatedly for years, it's still just the same mistake. All right, you're, you're, you can easily rectify the mistake just as, as much as anybody else. So if you thought for years that two and two is five, and then you really understood that it was four, you know, it doesn't matter that you've thought it for 30 years, you'll still be able to see the answer quickly because now you understand it. Same with panic. All right, your memory may be a bit stronger, might take a bit longer, but still it's the same mistake, don't worry. Now dealing with feelings of depression. Panic attacks can have such a debilitating effect on our life, it's normal to feel down, depressed, and sometimes hopeless, because you're thinking, this is never going to change, my life is such a mess, what am I going to do, there's no way out. You can feel like that with panic. Now, if you only started feeling depressed after you experienced panic, then the depression's most likely just because of the panic and due to your feeling hopeless about the anxiety. And when you recover from the panic, that those feelings will lift because they're only associated with the panic itself. And therapists usually treat panic first to see if the depression symptoms drop as the panic symptoms come down. But if you experience feelings of depression long before your panic attacks, then you, you know it's a good idea to go along to your GP and ask to see a cognitive therapist about depression. All right, so read the, the information in the following pages, which will help. And if you feel it describes how you're feeling or have felt in the past, talk to your doctor, all right? See a therapist. Get some books as well, uh, just like this program. But stick with cognitive behavioral techniques. They're so effective. Mind Over Mood by Christine Podesky is a great book to start with. I really recommend that.